All right. So last time we talked about operators and linear operators, and one of your homework was to uh, show that C is not a linear operator. Okay. So let me show you the proof for that. You're going to say, all right, so if I were to say C operating on a sum of functions f and g, condition one that must be satisfied is that it must be equal to C operating on f plus C operating on g, right? So is that equal? Well, what do you do? If you have C operating on anything, f can be anything, right? So. You just take the complex conjugate, whatever that thing is. So this is just going to be f plus g star. But if you want to take the complex conjugate of anything, you just take the complex conjugate of everything that's in there. Anything in there that's got an i, you replace by negative i. But since this is generic, you don't know any, this f right here might have some i's in it. So basically, all you have to do is you're going to take the complex conjugate of that is you take the complex conjugate of f and you take the complex conjugate of g. Okay? But complex conjugate of f is just what? Cf, right? And the complex conjugate of g is just c hat g. So this condition is satisfied. So if it's not a linear operator, it must be the second condition that's not satisfied. So let's take a look at the second condition. C operating on a constant times function f. The second condition that must be satisfied is that you should just be able to pull out that constant. So that's going to be equal to C times C hat operating on f. So let's do that. So this is going to be equal to C star f star, right? And if every expression you have in there, you just star it. Okay, to make it more clear, more step by step, you say this is going to be CF star. But CF star is just C star F star. Okay, but what is F star? So that's going to be C star, but F star is just C hat F. Okay, so these two are not the same. So generally this statement, these are not equal unless C is equal to C star. But we're not insisting that C be a, a real number. C can be any, any number, any constant. So a complex number is a constant. Okay? So, so that means this condition is not satisfied. If C is not real, if the constant is not real. Let's take a look at parity operators now. Okay. A parity operator, pi hat here, okay, is an example of what's called a replacement type of operator. Okay, so the rule is there's something in your function, replace it with something else. Okay, so uh, replacement type operators are generally... Uh, can be shown to be linear operator. So let's show that the parity operator is a linear operator. What the parity operator does is if you apply it on a function of x, you simply replace every instance of x by negative x. Let me just illustrate. Uh, if I were to do parity operator on 3x cubed plus 2x squared, what would that give me based on that definition? I see an x, I replace by negative x, so that's going to be 3 times negative x cubed plus 2 times, I see an x, I replace by negative x, so 2 times negative x squared. So that gives me negative 3x cubed plus 2x squared. Okay, so that's what the parity operator does, right? So uh, let's see if the parity operator is a linear operator. So let's do pi hat operating on f of x plus g of x. Is that equal to, let me get rid of this. Is that equal to f 
uh, fire the operator operating on f of x plus the parity operator operating on g of x. Okay, so what's the rule? I see an x replaced by negative x. So if I apply, I start with the left side, I see an x, I replace it by negative x. So that's f of negative x. And I see an x here, what do I do? Replaced by negative x. But what is f of negative x? That's the same thing as a parity operator operating on f of x, right? And what is g of x? g of negative x. That's just the parity operator operating on g of x. So this expression is the same thing as that. So the answer is yes. Okay? So what about the second condition? That should be straightforward. Parity operator operating on a constant times a function of x. Is that equal to a constant times the parity operator operating on f of x? Is it? Should be. So, what do I do here? Constant times where I see an x, I replace it by negative x. And, but what is f of negative x? Parity operator operating on f of x, and that is what we want to show, right? So, and that's the same thing as that. Okay. So, on to the next one, next example. A multiplicative operator is just an operator that multiplies the function by something. Okay. All it does to the function is it multiplies it by something could be a function of the variable that the operator depends on. It can be a number. Like, for example, if I define a hat, a hat f is equal to x squared f, all it does is whatever the function f is, I multiply it by, by x squared. So if I want to do what a hat operating on 2x, it's going to be x squared times 2x, so it's going to be 2x squared. So that's a multiplicative operator. So is a multiplicative operator a linear operator? And the answer there is yes. And that's going to be homework. Okay, so that's going to be your next homework. Show that it is a linear operator. Okay. Now, there are other multiplicative operators you might encounter. For example, uh, like something like a hat. Uh, let me use another operator. Let's say, find another letter. Let's not keep using a. E hat operating on f is just f. Is, that, is e hat a multiplicative operator? All it does is it multiplies the function by 1, right? So it's a multiplicative operator. So e hat is a linear operator. Okay. Uh, e hat would be an example of what's called an identity operator. Uh, you can also represent it a better, a more descriptive way of representing it is calling it one hat. Operating on f gives you one times f. Okay. What if I say n hat operating on f gives me zero? Is that a multiplicative operator? It multiplies the function by zero. So that's called the null operator. Another way you can represent it is zero hat f equals zero. Okay. So that's your null operator. And this is your identity operator. Prove that products of two linear operators is also a linear operator. This is where you apply the rule for multiplying operators. So let's say A hat and B hat. So you are going to assume A hat and B hat are linear, right? Those are the two operators we're going to use. So what, what do we need to show? A hat, B hat, operating on F plus G. Does that equal A hat, B hat, F? 
plus a hat b hat g that's condition one and condition number two a hat b hat constant times f must is that equal to constant times a hat b hat f okay so that should be true well, because you're not, I'm asking you to prove that that's true all right so let's see uh, let's start with the first one a hat b hat f plus g what do you do when you're multiplying operators what do you do you apply the rightmost operator first right since b hat is a linear operator what should I, what does this tell me I can write a hat I can distribute my b because b is a linear operator so I can say that's bf plus bg, right? Because b is a linear operator. Now, a is also a linear operator. So that means I can distribute a to that. This is just another function, and that's just another function, remember? OK, so now I can say this must be equal to a hat b hat f plus a hat b hat g. Okay. And if I know that a hat b, if that this is a hat b hat f, I know multiplication. This is the same. This is the same thing as a hat b hat f, and this is a hat b hat g. Okay. I'm actually missing a step here in the proof. I should have said this is a hat times b hat operating on f plus, operating on b hat operating on f plus g i missed a step there so this is the step i should have done first and then there okay that first step is the definition of what an operator multiplication is all right so we've proven the first case uh the first condition what about the second condition a hat b hat operating on c times f, where c is a constant. So multiplication means apply b first, right? So that's going to be a hat operating on the result of b hat operating on cf. What is b hat operating on cf? Since b is a linear operator, I can move my constant out. So that's going to be equal to c times b hat f. And b hat f is just another function, right? So that's just like c times times function g, right? So now I can move my, since a is also a linear operator, I can move my c outside. And so this is just going to be equal to c times a hat operating on b hat f. Okay, so you just do it step by step by step. Don't don't skip any steps. Okay, apply the definitions. And then what do you do next? This is just gonna be c times a hat b hat f. So that's the proof. So you have a product of two linear operators. The result is also a linear operator. Got it? Okay. Homework number two. Sum of two linear operators is also a linear operator. So if A hat and B hat are, if A hat and B hat are both linear operators, then the sum of A hat plus B hat is also a linear operator. I need a proof of that. Okay. So what are the conditions we need to satisfy? If you apply this on f plus g, that gives you a hat plus b hat f plus a hat plus b hat g, right? And the second condition you need to satisfy <coughs> to prove is that a hat plus b hat operating on constant times f is equal to a 
constant times a hat plus b hat operating on f. Okay? So, that's what you need to prove. Now, things you need to know, uh, what? Definition of the sum of two operators. If you have two operators operating on a function, what do you get? You can distribute your operator, right? That's, uh, that's true whether or not a... I'm sorry. Yeah, that's true whether or not A and B are linear, right? Sum of operators. So make sure, that should help you out.